Welcome to the first video in building a profitable web design business. I'm calling this introduction to business and really what I am going to reveal is the secrets of making money in web design, how you can make that shift from being an ordinary web designer to a really good one. So we're going to keep this quite high level, but what you're going to get out of this introduction, I hope is an insight into quite a different perspective, different way of looking at web design, different way of looking at your place in the world, a different way of thinking about your clients and what you can do for them. So let's go. So first of all, we're going to ask, what is a web designer? Well, there are two types of designer in the web design industry. And you should be one type or the other type, but you're not going to be both. So let me explain what I mean. This photo shows a room that could be from the IKEA catalogue, right? And in this room, we can see two types of design going on. Somebody has designed the chair and the sofa and the combination storage unit. Then somebody else has come along and created a room using those pre-made, pre-designed components. Okay, two different designers. One has created the components, the other one has combined those components into an overall effect, into a room. And it's very much the same with web design because we're actually seeing the end of, or we, we very shortly will see the end of, the kind of world where every web designer had to be an artisan, had to have these low-level skills in the same way that a long time ago, people who made furniture had to be expert carpenters. So you'd be a carpenter combined with an artist, a really fully rounded artisan. Now, the web is about 20 years old, coming up 20 years old, right? When I started doing this stuff, you had to have all of those skills. You had to understand HTML um, intimately. Then CSS came along. Before that, it was tables and it was horrible. And it, it was all quite confusing and you had to be quite technical. In order just to be able to publish anything online, you had to be quite technical. And that isn't really the same anymore. Because what we have today is an immense range of resources that are available to you to help you to make websites more quickly, more cheaply and more easily than ever before. So web design is now becoming like this picture. We've got a whole sector of people whose job it is to create themes, to create graphics assets, right? to create these reusable components and structures that other web designers can then combine to make real world actual pages. But the majority of us who actually put web pages and, and websites together, right? we can now be consumers of those materials and we don't have to make them all ourselves and that's the important thing. So I'm going to assume that you're the second type of designer. I'm going to assume that you make websites for clients or for yourself. Okay. You've got this immense wealth of resources available today and what that all that does really is it makes the creation of websites into a commodity. It is faster, it's easier, it's cheaper than ever before to publish anything uh, today. And it's even automatic. You know, we've, we've even got website builders offered by web hosts where um, a, a business owner can just select certain things from a wizard and lo and behold, they've got a website. I don't necessarily approve and I don't necessarily think that the websites created by these automatic wizards are going to be particularly effective, but I do very much approve of the fact that these resources have become easier, cheaper and faster and a lot more accessible for anyone to use. Now, that could make us kind of shake in our boots a little bit, say, well, isn't the, the role of web designer now becoming... Um, almost almost disappearing. Are we becoming redundant? Well, no, I don't think that's true. Where does it leave the web designer? Right. So we're going to ask the question, is modern web design less skilled? And I guess it's, it's a kind of yes or no answer to some degree, but I think that overall it 
is more skilled. You need to be more skilled to be a successful web designer today than you did, say, 15 years ago. Now, of course, you can be a successful web designer today with fewer technical skills, and I think that's a really good thing. A lot of people in the web industry will argue that if you don't have a really deep appreciation of HTML and mobile design and local SEO and lots and lots of these different things, then you can't really create a proper web page. I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, some of those things are important, but overall, there's, there's fewer technical skills that you need in order to be able to get over the, the line, you know, the, the cost of entry to publish a web page, and that's great. That's a great thing. But when I say it's more skilled, what I mean is that the focus of doing web design really well has now become more strategic. It's less about the mechanics of being able to publish. That has now become a commodity. So what's left is the stuff that really matters. And that's what the whole Ultimate Pro Web Design course is about. Web design is now higher level and it requires higher level skills. So what we can do now is we can now focus on what really matters. So let's start looking at that. So on one level, you're a web designer. But I also want you to think that on another level, you're not a web designer. And what we need to do is we need to distinguish the activity, which is what you do, from the result which is what do you deliver? And if you're familiar with the distinction between features and benefits, for example, a feature is what something does, right? A benefit is what it does for me. And that's very important when you think about sales and marketing. It does this, it does this, it does that, which means that you have this particular benefit. And a benefit is something that touches your life personally, right? Feature is what something does, benefit is what it does for me. So let's think, what are you actually selling? And you're not just selling websites. So as a top level web designer today, what do you actually do? Now the process, we know the process is web design. You come up with a site map, you build a website that follows the sitemap, you might use WordPress, you might use HTML, you might use this, that and the other, right? That's web design. But what you deliver is more than a website. You, what you're delivering is the goal of your client, whoever your client may be. And that goal might be to grow my business. It might be to get new and better paying clients. It might be to increase my profits. It might be to bury my competitor. I actually talked to a new client today who said, that is my goal. I want to put my competitor, my main competitor, out of business. Or maybe it's, I want to just get more time with my family. I want to work less. I want to get more money coming through the business so I can get more time with my family. These are the things that really motivate people. These are the things that affect us on an emotional level. And the things that affect us on an emotional level, we're getting onto sales now. The things that affect us emotionally are the things that really motivate us to take action. So what I propose that you do is get away from thinking that I sell websites, I sell the web design process. That's just the means to an end. What you should really be in the business of selling is selling your customers their own goals. So take the scenario of somebody just wants their business to work better so that they can spend more time with their family and they think that a new website could help make that happen, don't sell them a website. Sell them more time with their family. To get the distinction, the website is a means to an end. And websites are commodities. There are lots and lots of people out there who can create a website. What you need to be selling is what the website does for you, the benefit of that website. And you can make that different to the online website building wizard or the kid down the street who can throw together a website in, in, a, in an evening from his, from his bedroom. So how do you discover 
a client's true goals. Client comes up to you and says, I need a new website, can you give me a quote? The first thing that you should say is, no, I'm not going to give you a quote. But I'll, I've got a bunch of in, uh, questions that I need to ask you so that I can understand what it is that you want to achieve so that I can then make recommendations about how best to do that. So you've got to ask lots of questions, and the questions will be things along the lines of why. Okay, why do you think you need a new website? What is wrong with a website that you have now? Why is that important to you? Okay, so client may so a client may tell you that they think they need to attract a different type of prospect, for example, or they need to make more repeat sales, or they need to uh, build a mailing list. So you can then ask them, why is that important to you? To get to the reason behind the statement. You might ask, what will that mean for you? If we can increase the revenues of your business through online sales by 50% from this to this, what will that mean for you? And the key word in that question is the word you. So what you're doing is you are then making a connection, you're drawing a line between something that may happen and the personal impact to the prospect or to the client. You might ask, so that you can. So for example, we might say, okay, so if the website can generate then 30 good leads per month and you're gonna convert 10% of those into sales, that will mean this, so that you can go home, spend more time with your family, so that you can take a vacation, whatever it may be. But what we're just trying to do is we're trying to peel back the layers of the onion from what the prospect first tells you that they need. We're trying to get it back all the way down to the point where it touches them personally. What does it actually mean to them? So let's move on to thinking about the stuff that really matters. Once you've identified what the client really wants, now we can start to think about how you're going to get there and how a website or web design work or web marketing work may help. Now in general, we know that there are some things that matter an awful lot more today than the simple raw mechanics of publishing online, which as we know is now a commodity. Getting profitable traffic is really important. I think that the days when we have somebody doing SEO and somebody doing pay-per-click with AdWords and somebody doing pay-per-click with Facebook and then somebody else doing the design, those days are going to seem quite unsophisticated very soon. I think we need to have the role of architect where people understand and have an overview of all of this stuff because you can invest time and money in SEO, you can invest time and money in optimizing your website for conversions, or you can invest time and money in pay-per-click but unless you know the relative benefits, the re relative profitability of all of those different mechanisms, either getting traffic or converting traffic, you're not going to be able to make proper intelligent decisions on, on what's best. So I think that we, as web marketers, as designers, need to have a, as high level of view as possible of all of those things so that we can advise and make those choices. Positioning is incredibly important. When somebody arrives at a website, they want to know, am I in the right place? Am I going to get what I want here? And the identity behind the website is going to be very important. What does the website stand for? What does the company behind the website stand for? Who are they? What do they believe in? Crafting powerful propositions really matters. It's just not enough today to say, this is what we do, this is what we do it for. It's not enough today just to say, this is what we do, and this is who we do it for. Propositions need to be bold, courageous. They need to make a promise that this will solve that problem for you. Right? We should be unafraid of selling. Conversion is incredibly important. It starts with a powerful proposition, but then there's a bunch of elements that are also required. You've got to give people all the positive reasons why this thing will make sense for them. You've got to resolve the objections. You've got to make inaction seem unappealing. 
You've got to provide compelling calls to action and actually say, now's the time to do it. Back their call, call to action up with reasons, urgency, scarcity. Give people a reason to act now. And underlying so much of this is the skill of writing. Copywriting, I believe, is the number one most important skill for web designers. You can't be a designer and or be a good designer without knowing how to write, having an appreciation of that. So at a high level, in general, these are things that we know are very, very important when it comes to making websites more effective. Now, let's look at the specific case, because all those, those high-level things are all well and good, but when you're talking to a specific prospect or a specific client, what really matters is going to vary from prospect to prospect, because they're going to have different goals, they're going to have different needs, they're going to have different wants. And you can only discover what really matters to them by asking the right questions. And I would say, if a prospect doesn't want to engage in that conversation, a prospect doesn't want to answer those questions, don't waste your time with them. I know that's quite a challenging thing to say. We kind of think that we need to chase any work that's out there, particularly at the beginning, right? But as I'll go on to explain, saying no can be incredibly important and incredibly powerful and can have a huge impact on your profitability and actually your growth in many ways. Nobody needs a website per se, right? Nobody needs a website for the sake of having a website. People need websites that deliver results. Now, if a website is commercial, then the important results, what really matters, likely to be in the areas of profitability or revenue, growth, market share, stuff like that. If a website is not commercial, the results that the things that really matter are likely to be about spreading a message or building a following, right? Doing some good in the world, perhaps. But you need to understand what really matters for each specific client because you're not selling a website. You're selling them what really matters to them. You're selling them the goal, the thing that touches them in their human heart, the stuff that is going to motivate them to say, I like this person. I want to pay this person instead of that old person down there. And now I need to move on to talking about the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule has been around for hundreds of years, but it is the most fundamental factor in your success. I cannot overstate this enough. Put it very simply, what the 80-20 rule says is that 80% of the benefits of something come from 20% of the input. 20% of what is done produces 80% of the benefits. The other 20% of the benefits comes from the other 80% of the stuff that's done, of the input, or the effort, or whatever it is. So if you put that on a graph like that, at the top of the graph, the top 20% of whatever it is produces 80% of the value. And the other bottom 80% of stuff produces just 20% of the value. Now, I want to talk about how this applies to your time in particular. Because I've got this point on that graph that I call the Clark Kent Apex. And the idea is really that a lot of us spend most of our time not exercising our special powers. Right? Superman spent a lot of his time pretending to be Clark Kent for some reason. He wasn't being Superman. He wasn't exercising his special powers. And then just some of the time, when he was being Superman, he had an enormous impact on the world. And I want to say that we all have the tendency to be Clark Kent, to play that Clark Kent. And the 80-20 rule is there to challenge us to say, no. Let's do things a different way. So let's look at the implications of 80-20. 20% of the time that you spend, the time that you invest in your work, will generate 80% of your profits. 20% of your customers, the top 20%, will also generate 80% of your profits. But you'll also find that the worst 20% of your customers will generate 80% of your headaches as well. 
the best 20% of the time that you do will generate 80% of your job satisfaction. Most of your time will not be so satisfying. So what's the challenge there in that, in, for, for us in that? Well, I believe that the secret to building a profitable business or web design business, whatever it may be, really lies in understanding the implications of that 80-20 rule to your business and to your life. So here's the answer to having a profitable, enjoyable, satisfying business. You need to do more valuable work. You need to do it more of the time and you need to do it for clients who appreciate its value. Let me go over that again. You need to do more valuable work. That means using your best skills more of the time. And you need to say yes to the clients who really need you, who really need you at your best. And you need to say no to the clients who do not appreciate what you can do for them. So, of course, that's challenging us to know what our gifts are, what our special powers are, actually what we like doing and what we don't like doing. And you'd be amazed how few of us really know deep down what it is that we enjoy doing because we spend a lot of our time addicted to doing work, addicted to relationships, addicted to things that aren't actually very good for us and that we don't enjoy doing. If you do that, your business will snowball. And here's the logic. When you set out your stall to say, this is what I do, this is what I stand for, this is what I'm great at, these are the benefits that I can deliver for you. Then you will polarize your market. The people who really need that will be positively attracted to you. The people who don't need that will be positively repelled. And that's a good thing because you only really want that 20% or the best 20% of that 20%. When you attract those clients, they will be keen, excited, enthusiastic. They'll be in love with the message that you offer. They will be more likely to give you free reign, to treat you as an expert, to listen to what you have to say, and to let you do what you do best without interference. That in turn will then help you to do great work and to achieve great results. And that will then create great case studies and great references. The best possible advert for your business is a happy customer. The worst possible advert for your business is an unhappy customer. So can you see how it snowballs from there? Plus, when you're exercising your best skills more of the time, guess what's gonna happen? your best skills are going to get better. And that will then push you further ahead of the competition. Compare that to the old world, to the opposite, when you'd be having to spend all of your time trying to keep up with changes in the technology, trying to keep up with what does HTML do now and PHP and WordPress and all of these different things. And you can't keep up with all that stuff now. We need to specialize today. And you need to specialize in something that suits you. It's something that fits and works for your temperament, your tastes, your loves, your hates, your special powers. So here's the trap. This is the old world of web design. If you're stuck being one of those jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none web designer, okay, if you're selling websites to clients who just want websites, everyone's got a website, everyone needs a website, or I'm bored of my old website, I want a new website, if you're just selling websites, here's what's going to happen. You'll find yourself busy, but unprofitable. You'll be always chasing the next little project. You'll be working hand to mouth, never quite generating enough profit. You'll be doing low level work, and that's a really important sign. You'll be doing menial stuff. You'll be repeating stuff over and over again that doesn't necessarily need to be repeated over and over again. And you'll be doing it for disinterested clients. The end result all being, you might be busy, you might be paying the bills, but you'll find that you'll have little time and little energy to think about your strategy and to change direction. That's the trap. 
says how to break free. First thing, you've got to stop just selling websites. Do not advertise yourself as a web designer. And um, if you look at your portfolio, if you're already in the web design business and you've got one website of this type for this type of client, then another kind of website for a different type of client, and they're all kind of okay, then what you'll find is the overall impression of that will be this is a person who just makes websites for kind of anyone. But you don't need to just make websites for anyone because you are a unique individual. Nobody in the whole world, in the whole of human history, has had the exact life experiences that you have. Nobody has the exact skills that you have. And those experiences and those skills and that education all combine to make you unique. You have got interests, loves, hates, passions, tastes and experience that will make you the exact right person for a particular sector in the market. And yeah, nearly everyone needs a website now. And the great thing is that that means that there's almost an infinite number of little niches that you can then address. You can say, I'm the guy for this. I'm the guy for this. This is what I do. These are the results that I get. And when you focus your energy to that extent, you can really start a fire within that little sector of the market. Because you will have a proposition for that sector of the market that nobody else can match. Particularly if they are just a web designer that makes websites. So you need to stop selling websites and you need to start selling your clients what they really want. You need to sell them their own goals back to them. Now they may need help figuring that out. And I believe that a good marketer, a good web designer, should be responsible for helping our clients to figure out what it is that really matters. Otherwise, how can we possibly fulfill it? You have got to figure out what your special powers are. I can't answer that question for you, but maybe there are processes that we can use that can help us to identify those and literally just own them. Say, yes, I'm good at that. I'm experienced at that. So that's definitely something that we're going to look at. You need to choose or identify and then occupy a powerful position in the market. We're going to talk a lot more about positioning. The position means this is who I am. When you think me, when you think this business, you know what it means. You know what it stands for. And you know how it is distinct from all the other options out there. That's what positioning means. And you need one. You need a powerful position in your market, in your sector, in your niche, whatever it is. And the final important step is that you need to start saying no to everything that doesn't represent who you choose to be. That is your position. That is with your special powers. Right? If you've got a particular interest, a particular message, a particular passion for one area, and then something else comes in that's unrelated where you can't really use your special powers, where you can't really have the impact that you would normally have, even if it's offering money. My advice is do not take that. Say no to it. And the more that you say no to the things that aren't right for you, that reinforce you, that represent you, and the more you start saying yes, and seeking out those things that do reflect your special and unique position in this world, the more you will feel that special and unique position. So let's just look ahead at some of the stuff that we're going to cover on this course. We've got to look at how you're going to identify, figure out what your special powers are. We need to create that market position. We're going to need a load of tactics of how can you avoid those wrong clients? How can you get rid of the prospects that aren't going to be right for you as early as possible and using as little of your time as possible. Because the wrong clients are all down there at the bottom of the 80-20 curve. We don't want them. And we don't want to invest much time in figuring out which are the wrong ones and which might be the right ones. That will let us invest more time in the right ones. So how do we avoid the wrong prospects? How do we attract the right clients? We're going to look at 
a range of super sales techniques. We're going to go right under the skin of sales and identify what it is. We've touched on that to some degree today. And then, very importantly, how can we make maximum profit from fewer clients? So that's just a taste of some of the stuff that we're going to cover in the rest of this course. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to... Thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.